Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 12th of October, the feast of St. Wilfred of Ripon, Bishop and Missionary. Wilfred was born in 634 into a Northumbrian Christian family and was educated on Linda's farm by St. Aidan. Later he travelled to Rome, spending time in Lyon on his way there and back. He returned with a team of French masons, built Ripon and Hexham abbeys and other prestigious stone churches as centres for mission in Britain. He was made Bishop of York, overseeing Northern England. As a result of his European experience, he influenced the Synod of Whitby to abandon the Eastern Orthodox date for Easter used by Celtic Christians and adopt the Latin date, along with other customs, in 664. He travelled the length of England, evangelising pagan Saxons at great risk to his life, but died returning home to Ripon in 709. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, to you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the works of your hands. You made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. He is our life, our hope, and our salvation. May your Spirit cleanse and renew our hearts and minds, that we may rejoice to give glory to your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, worthy of all worship, now and for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 90 Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the earth and the world were formed, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday, which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes, in the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure, we are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set our misdeeds before you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone, our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are threescore years and ten, or if our strength endures even fourscore, Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away, and we are gone. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us, and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works. Let your glory be over all their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord be upon us. Prosper our handiwork. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Almighty God, our eternal refuge, teach us to live with the knowledge of our death and to rejoice in the promise of your glory revealed to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate 
and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where the body was laid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The noble Joseph, when he had taken down your most pure body from the tree, wrapped it in fine linen and anointed it with spices and placed it in a new tomb. But you rose on the third day, O Lord, granting the world great mercy. Alleluia. This verse from an ancient Eastern Orthodox Easter hymn summarises today's reading and slightly different versions of it in the other three Gospels. We know little of Joseph of Arimathea except that he was a member of the Jewish Sanhedrin, wealthy, moving in high circles as he can appeal to Pilate to release the body of Jesus for burial. He has his own funeral plan with a high-status hillside tomb already purchased not far from Temple Mount in Jerusalem. He's been a secret follower of Jesus all along, keeping his counsel during the acrimonious debate over the controversy Jesus raises. But after the crucifixion, he expresses his opinion of Jesus by actions, securing Jesus' body and burying it in his own tomb leaving the rest of the funeral arrangements to the women and to Nicodemus, another secret, well-placed, rich follower of Jesus and a Pharisee, according to John. Joseph and Nicodemus may well have known each other. As pious Jews, it's highly unlikely they would have known the women disciples who weren't local people. Normally, they wouldn't have wanted to get close to any female outside the family circle. Men saw to all burial arrangements. The Old Testament book of Tobit mentions that it's an act of piety for a Jewish man to make sure no dead person, whoever they were in life, is left abandoned or unburied. In this case, it was important to do it with haste before Passover Sabbath Eve begins. Women and men alike are united in grief by this tragic loss and act together to ensure another curse isn't heaped on the memory of Jesus, left unburied over the Sabbath. After this, Joseph and Nicodemus disappear from Scripture, just when the greatest story of all is about to unfold, first revealed to a few lowly women even though the gospel is then taken forward by men who hear the good news from them. We don't know what happened to Joseph or Nicodemus after they performed a duty any self-respecting pious Jew would want to do. But without them enabling the women to lay Jesus to rest properly, things might have turned out differently. Remember, Pilate authorised security guards to cover the tomb just in case his disciples came and removed him and made false claims about the empty tomb. Things turned out in a way nobody could have expected, appending assumptions about the role of men and women, rich and poor. Welcome to God's Kingdom. Glory to you, giver of life, Christ our God. When you descended into death, O life immortal, you conquered hell with the splendour of your Godhead. Glory to you, giver of life, Christ our God. As we rejoice in the fellowship of all the saints, in the power of the risen Lord, 
Let us pray for the unity of the Church in witness and proclamation of the Gospel in our land and throughout the world. Lord, graciously hear us. For the peace and security and well-being of all peoples and for the leaders of nations, Lord, graciously hear us. For our medical centres, our places of work, education and leisure, especially those in our ministry area, Lord, graciously hear us. For a blessing on our homes, for our relations and friends and all whom we love, Lord, graciously hear us. For your church and for Mary, our bishop, and all who serve in ministry with her, Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to war in Ukraine, Yemen, Sudan, and for all who suffer from violence or have died because of conflict, Lord, graciously hear us. For the sick and suffering and all who minister to their needs, especially those who have entrusted themselves to our prayers, Fides, Lorna and Geoffrey, Audrey, Jill, Father John, Michelle, Holly and Max, Callum, Jean, Ian, Philip, Doreen. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, you called our forebears to the light of the gospel by the preaching of your servant Wilfred. Help us to keep his life and labour in remembrance to glorify your name by following the example of his zeal and perseverance. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen.